from East Flat Rock, North Carolina, we welcome you to Faith in God Missions with the Reverend Steve and Frida Bishop. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions, a ministry working to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and preach the gospel in the United States and the foreign fields. Join us now as we worship the Lord together in word and song. Hello and thank you for tuning in to Faith in God Missions today. My name is Joe Lund and I want to take this moment that I have with you to let you know some different ways that you can keep up with the ministry and to see all that is being done uh, through Faith in God Missions. I want to invite you to visit our webpage, faithingodnc.com. I want to invite you to check out our Facebook page where we post uh, videos and pictures of the work of the ministry. We also have a YouTube page that you can watch messages and so forth. And you can also, uh, you can email us, you can write to us at uh, P.O. Box G, East Flat Rock, North Carolina, 28726. If you're not on our mailing list each month, we send out a monthly letter that, uh, that sh just gives a brief snapshot of the work that's been done the previous month and work that's being anticipated in the months ahead, I'd encourage you to reach out to us through email, through mail, asking to be placed on our mailing list so you can get that information each and every month. Multiple ways for you to see the work of this ministry, our website, Facebook, YouTube, and monthly letter. I hope you're taking advantage so you can see the work that's being done and it gives you an avenue to pray for this ministry. Thank you.
your sins. He said, you must be born again. He preached Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead. Yeah, that's what he preached. Oh, he said, you've got to make it right. He said, you need to come tonight. The Spirit grew stronger. We're going to talk to you just a little bit today about a prophet. They call him a minor prophet because of the size of his book. There's nothing minor about him because he said a whole lot. And that's the book of Joel. That little minor prophet, little three short chapters in the book of Joel. We're going to read just a few verses in Joel, then we're going to skip all over the Bible. That's why I said you might want to stand for just a minute because there's a whole lot of, whole lot of Bible that unless the Lord changed my mind, I'm going to read. In Joel chapter 1, we've got the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pehuel. Hear this, ye old man, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you're faithful. We know, God, that you're just. Dear God, we ask you, Lord, you anoint me today. Help me to say, Lord, what you want me to say, and no more, no less. Dear God, if one doesn't know you today, Lord, that today would be the day they make that decision to serve you and to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, apparently here in Joel, Joel here, it means Jehovah is God or the Lord is God is what Joel's name means. He's got a main theme here. His main theme is the day of the Lord. And that day of the Lord is soon to come. I believe it's closer now than it has ever been before. It's soon to come. And in Joel 2 and 12 and 13, he's, well, Joel, the Lord is calling the church back to repentance. But here in those first three verses I read, it says, Hear ye, O man, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or in the days of your fathers? What Joel is actually saying here is, listen up, O man. Y'all listen. Give ear. Y'all listen to what i got to say. He says, I've got a question to ask you. Have you ever seen a time like this before? Has your fathers ever told you a time like this before? Can you ever remember hearing it? Can you ever remember seeing it? That's what he's basically saying right here. He said, what time is he talking about? If you look down at verse number 4, it says, That which the pommel worm has left and the locust has eaten, and that which the can locust has left, that the canker worm has eaten, and that which the canker worm has left, that has the caterpillar eaten. You know, so apparently they were having a famine, and it was a major famine of locusts in this day here he's talking about. And Joel was asking this kind of assembly together. He's asking his man, y'all listen up. Can y'all ever remember a time that it's ever been like this? Can you ever remember a day? Have you ever heard it? Did your fathers ever tell you a time that in his lifetime, the land was like this. It was covered in locusts. Locusts, according to Proverbs, they don't have a king. 
They don't have a leader. But they go in a band. They're just like an army. They just follow. Each one of them knows what they're supposed to be doing. They just follow right along. They don't have a leader. But the Lord put it into them. They know exactly what to do. These locusts here, they were to destroy every, everything, every green thing. They ate every green leaf. They had all the grass. They, so they went down here. If you look a bit further, flip back over to Joel. If you look a bit forward, number 7, verse 7 to verse chapter 1. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig trees. He hath made me clean, bare, and cast it away, and the branches thereof are made white. These locusts, they'd come and they attacked everything. They stripped all the bark off the tree. They left nothing. They left nothing. You know, Joel was saying, have you ever seen a time like this? You know, but Joel was also talking about a prophet that is yet to be fulfilled. If you look over in the book of Revelations, you know, in Matthew chapter 24, we call it Mount Ol the Olive Discord, chapter 24 and chapter 25 of Matthew. The Lord tells us in Matthew, he says, never has there ever been a time like this. He's talking about the tribulation time. The tribulation is soon coming. But he's prepared us. He's, we're to be a light. We're to be a voice. We're to be a trumpet. If you look at chapter 2 of Joel, it says, Blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. You know, that day has soon come, and Joel pre predicted this. And in Revelations, we see well, it has come to pass in Revelations. It's soon coming here. In verse number 2, it says, The day of darkness and of gloominess, the day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the light, neither shall any more after it, even to the years of many generations. You know, he's saying the same thing the Lord told us in, in, in Matthew 24. For then shall great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. You know, when the Lord comes back, when this time right here happens, when this right here happens, the church is not going to be here. We don't have to worry about this. When the tribulation is taking place, the church is already going to be gone. But you've got to repent. If you look over in Luke 16th chapter, we, Brother Rick, he mentioned this a little bit earlier this morning. He mentioned about light yesterday and was talking about light a while ago. But in the 16th chapter of Luke, we see there's a rich man, a certain rich man, the Bible says, and there was a beggar that was named Lazarus. You know, this rich man, he thought that he had everything. He thought life could not get any better. He thought, you know, he, he had all this money. He was rich. He didn't have to worry about a thing. He saw Lazarus out there and Lazarus being a beggar. He hated Lazarus. He did not want to see him. You know, he, he always said, get him out from in front of my gate. I don't want to see him. He bothers me. Get him out from in front of my gate. But Lazarus had something this rich man did not have. This rich man, he had all the wealth he could ever want. Lazarus had nothing. He was a beggar. But the Bible says the rich man died, and he was buried. And it says that Lazarus died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. When he was carried by those angels, it, says, it goes on down a bit further, and it says that the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Lazarus, that old beggar that he didn't want to have anything to do with. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. When he was in Abraham's bosom, he was there in torment, that rich man. He was in torment. Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, he was in peace. He was in comfort. He was being comforted. You know, the Lord never had come at this particular time. He never had shed his blood. He never had died and rose and went to heaven. But this is before the Lord's Gave his life for us. But it says, he cried out, Father Abraham, send Lazarus. That he may just dip his finger in water. Touch the tip of my tongue. Because I'm tormenting these flames. You know, that's what's going to happen. We're to be a, we are to be a, a trumpet, sound an alarm. I know there's at least seven preachers in here that I see right off hand. We should be sounding the alarm. The Lord is soon coming. I'm afraid we've got so slack in our churches that we're afraid to preach the Lord is coming. We're afraid to preach about hell. But hell is a real place. Just like heaven is a real place. That rich man, it says, he lifted his eyes in hell. And in hell, he saw Lazarus. He saw Abraham. And in hell, he felt. And he even said he was in, let's turn over and look. That's one of the scriptures I want to read. It's in Luke chapter 16. We'll start down in verse number 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted his eyes, being in torment. So that tells you right there, hell is a place of torment. 
That's not a place where you're going to be relaxing. That's a place where you're going to be, you're going to be in anguish. In fact, it tells us over in Mark. It tells us in Mark, it says, it talks about hell and it talks about well, there, the torment. You're in there, the flames forever in Mark. But here it says also, it says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, where the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell lifted his eyes, been in torment, and said, Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. And cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. In hell, you're going to be tormented. You, forever, you're going to be tormented. But when you trust in the Lord, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord made a way that we could escape this. You know, I said a while ago, he's never, we never faced any temptation, that the Lord has not made a way we could escape. Right here, hell, the Lord has made a way we can escape it. We don't have to go there. Hell was made for the, angel, the devil and his angels. It wasn't made for you and me, but we have chose to go there. We have chose not to sound the alarm, not to blow that trumpet, sound the alarm, telling people what to expect. If you look over in the book of Revelations, Revelation chapter 9, you know, I told you a while ago that in Joel it's talking about the locusts and how it ate everything. They didn't have a leader. The locusts just destroyed, they destroyed all the green plants. They destroyed all the... All their food, it just wiped everything out. But you look over here in Revelation chapter 9, and it talks about the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now this is the first woe that's mentioned in Revelation. The first woe. It says, and he opened the bottomless pit. Who opened it? The angel that had that key to the bottomless pit. He came and opened that pit. And he opened that bottomless pit, and there rose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. You look right here. We were talking about locusts a while ago. These locusts destroyed all the green stuff. It says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not sealed of God in their forehead. Now, these locusts are totally different from the locusts we saw back in Joel's, where they came and just done away with all the green, all the plant life they've done away with it. These locusts here, they're coming during tribulation time for punishment of man. For man that rejected God, and they wanted to go their own way, even though we've heard many times, Michael and I was talking this morning, about my fathers. You know, my daddy told me something. He didn't have to tell me twice, because I knew what was going to happen if he told me the second time. He told me one time to do something, I better hear what he said then. You know, I got to think, you know, what? When the Lord speaks to us, he shouldn't have to tell us twice. When he tells us one time, we should be jumping at the opportunity to do what he wants us to do. But we don't. We rebel. Steve rebels. A lot of times, I, the Lord tells me to do something. I said, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. Sound that alarm. Every one of us preachers here, even Sunday school teachers, deacons, you're going to give an account if you're not sounding an alarm. Young people, you should be listening to what the pastor says, what your preacher says. Listen to them. There is a way that we can escape hell because it is soon coming. The Lord's coming back. There is going to be a hell. We're going to be a judgment day. That judgment day, that white throne judgment, if you haven't been, your name's not written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, you're going to be right there with the devil. If you look on over, let me read you about those locusts first, what they look like. It says, and, he, and it was commanded them they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men would have not the seal of God in their forehead. And to them it was given that they should kill, that they should not kill them, but that they should torment them five months. Now, if you go to hell, you can be tormented a whole lot longer than five months. This here is just the first woe, the first woe to come in the book of Revelations. Their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall man seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them telling us it's to be so bad that man's going to want to die. He can't commit suicide. It don't matter what he's doing. He, he, can't, he can't die. He's going to live because he's going to face this torment. He's going to face the punishment where he rejected God. He's going to pay for his sin and face that punishment. And the shape of these locusts, I want you to pay attention to this now. The shape of these locusts were like two horses, prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Now, have you ever seen a locust that looked like a horse and had a man's head on it? The Bible says right here, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. And they had hair as the hair of women. Their teeth were as the teeth of lions. 
You know, Joel talks about that too when he's making this prophecy in verse 7. It talks about the, the, te- the, the mouth of a lion and the teeth on there in verse 7. It says, and they, had blast- and they had breastplates as it were breast- breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt man five months. And they had a king over them. And I told you a while ago, locusts didn't have a king, according to Proverbs. Back in Georgia, they didn't have a king. But now they've got a king over them. That king is that angel that came down from heaven, opened that pit. He is telling them what to do. That's the devil. That's, the, that's one of his angels that works for the devil. He's telling them exactly what to do. They've got that power upon them. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollon. You know, that's not God. This is the devil it's talking about right here. It's talking about the devil. He's talking about his, his angels that he has. Would you look over a little bit further. Chapter 13 of Revelations, verse 1. And I, saw, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemers. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. There's that lion again. And the dragon gave him power in his seat and great authority. You know, that day is soon coming. I really believe with all my heart that day is soon coming. Uh, the church is not going to be here. But we've got to sound that alarm now. We've got to blow that trumpet. We've not got to be telling people now how to avoid this. How not to go to hell, but how to make it to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ, through his shed blood, believing in him. I was quoted a while ago in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, he freely gave him, his only begotten son, that we could do whatever we wanted to with him. We could trust him. We could believe on him. But we chose to crucify him. We chose to hang him on a tree. You know, we're going to pay for those sins if we don't ask the Lord to forgive us. It's been said many times. I heard it this week, Romans 5. I'm going to read you some of that too. Romans 5, and starting in verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due times, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. Can you imagine? But God commended his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for me and he died for you. That we can escape this woe right here we're reading in Revelation. We can escape this great tribulation period. We can escape that. We can spend our time with the Lord. Revelation. <laughs>
you for joining us today. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions of East Flat Rock, North Carolina, a ministry that's working in the United States and the foreign fields. Please send all correspondence to Faith in God Missions, Post Office Box G, East Flat Rock, North Carolina, 28726. Or visit us on the website at faithingodnc.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Faith in God Missions. Until next time, remember, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son.